And good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer with Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago. <clears throat> and this morning, uh, this Wednesday morning, uh, it is the second Wednesday of Advent, and today we are commemorating uh, Lucy of Syracuse. And I thought I'd read uh, the hagiography. It's worth reading. It's very interesting. She's a martyr. Uh, died in the year 304 of the Common Era. Lucy or Lucia was martyred at Syracuse in Sicily during the Diocletian persecution of 303 and 304 of the Common Era. Her tomb can still be found in the catacombs of Syracuse. She was venerated soon after her death and her cult spread quickly throughout the church. She is among the saints and martyrs named in the Roman canon of the Mass. Most of the details of Lucy's life are obscure. In the tradition, she is remembered for her purity of life and her gentleness of spirit. Because her name means light, she is sometimes thought of as the patron saint of those who suffer from diseases of the eyes. In popular piety, uh, Lucy is perhaps most revered because her feast day was for many centuries the shortest day of the year. The reform of the calendar by Pope Gregory VIII in 1582 would shift the shortest day to December 21st or 22nd, depending upon the year. It was historically on Lucy's day that the light began gradually to return and the days to lengthen. This was particularly powerful in Northern Europe where the days of winter were quite short. In Scandinavian countries, particularly Sweden, Lucy's Day has long been a festival of light that is kept as both an ecclesiastical commemoration and a domestic observance. In the domestic celebration of Lucia, a young girl in the family dresses in pure white, a symbol of Lucy's faith, purity and martyrdom, wears a crown of lighted candles upon her head, a sign that on Lucy's day, the light is returning. And so, so family special foods prepared especially for this day. In praise of her service, the young girl is called Lucy for the day. All right, I have some uh, page numbers for those of you who are using the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, morning Prayer Right to begins on page 80. The Venite, page 82. We have one psalm this morning, Psalm 68, and that is found on pages 676 to 679. Our two canticles, Canticle 11, begins on page 87, and Canticle 16 begins on page 92. The Apostles' Creed begins on page 96, and this is followed by the Lord's Prayer in traditional language, Suffrages A also on page 97. The general thanksgiving begins on page 101. And now uh, my candle is lit and I invite you to do the same. Uh, and this reminds us that God is with us. We may be few in number, but God is with us as we pray together. And now let's take a breath. Let's find that place of quiet where we can enter and be still. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. And together the Venite, uh, Psalm 95 on page 82. Our King and Saviour now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God 
and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Our King and Saviour now draws near. Come, let us adore him. And together, Psalm 68 on page 676. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. Let them vanish like smoke when the wind drives it away. As the wax melts at the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, exalt him who rides upon the heavens. Yahweh is his name, rejoice before him. Father of orphans, defender of widows, God in his holy habitation. God gives a solitary a home and brings forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in dry places. O oh God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth shook and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai. At the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a gracious rain, O oh God, upon your inheritance. You refreshed the land when it was weary. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O oh God, you have made provision for the poor. The Lord gave the word. Great was a company of women who bore the tidings. Kings with their armies are fleeing away. The women at home are dividing the spoils. Though you lingered among the sheepfolds, you shall be like a dove whose wings are covered with silver, whose feathers are like green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, it was like snow falling in Zalman. O mighty mountain, O hill of Bashan, O rugged mountain, O hill of Bashan, why do you look with envy, O rugged mountain, at the hill which God chose for his resting place? Truly, the Lord will dwell there forever. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. The Lord comes in his holiness from Sinai. You have gone up on high and led captivity captive. You have received gifts even from your enemies, that the Lord God might dwell among them. Blessed be the Lord day by day the God of our salvation who bears our burdens. He is our God, the God of our salvation. God is the Lord by whom we escape death. God shall crush the heads of his enemies and the hairy scalp of those who go on still in their wickedness. The Lord has said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, that your foot may be dipped in blood, the tongues of your dogs in the blood of your enemies. 
they see your procession, O oh God. Your procession into the sanctuary, my God and my King. The singers go before, musicians follow after. <clears throat> In the midst of maidens playing upon the hand drums. <clears throat> Bless God in the congregation. Bless the Lord, you that are of the fountain of Israel. There is Benjamin, least of the tribes at the head, the princes of Judah in a company, and the princes of Zebulon and Naphtali. Send forth your strength, O God, Establish, O oh God, what you have wrought for us. King shall bring gifts to you for your temple's sake at Jerusalem. Rebuke the wild beast of the reeds and the peoples, a herd of wild bulls with its calves. Trample down those who lust after silver. Scatter the peoples that delight in war. Let tribute be brought out of Egypt. Let Ethiopia stretch out her hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. He rides in the heavens, the ancient heavens. He sends forth his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to God. His majesty is over Israel. His strength is in the skies. How wonderful is God in his holy places. The God of Israel giving strength and power to his people. Blessed be God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people, Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the core of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account and everyone mourn who lives in it and all of its rise like the Nile and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and boldness on every head. I will make it like the mourning for an only son and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. 
They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. In that day, the beautiful young women and the young men shall faint for thirst. Those who swear by Ashima of Samaria and say, as your God lives, O Dan, and as the way of Beersheba lives, they shall fall and never rise again. Here ends the reading, and together the third song of Isaiah, Canticle 11 on page 87. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open, by day or night they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, and see, I am alive forever and ever. And I have the keys of death and of Hades. Now write what you have seen, what is, and what is to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Yet this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. To everyone who conquers, I will give permission to eat from the tree of life that is in the paradise. Of God. Here ends the reading. And together, the Song of Zechariah, Canticle 16, on page 92. 
Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And together the Apostles' Creed on page 96 followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. Together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Loving God, for the salvation of all, you gave Jesus Christ as light to a world in darkness. Illumine us, as you did your daughter Lucy, with the light of Christ, that by the merits of his passion, we may be led to eternal life through the same Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. 
and in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now we pray for the healing and comfort of all those on our parish prayer list this week, beginning December the 10th. We pray for the sick, Mark, Eli, Ron B and Judy B, Jerry C, Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, Mary, Ed, Thomas, a priest, Susan T, former President Carter, Ken, a deacon, Mary, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eddie, Donald, John, Tim, Connie, John, Warren, Scott, Mary Jane, Eric, Betty, Tony, Larry, Sandy, Van, Yasmin, Jenny, Mother Emily, Beth, Max, Frank, Ray in hospice, Maxine, and for Mother Anne, for Sophie, having surgery today, and for all with COVID-19. We pray for all those needing our special prayers this morning, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth. We pray for all who mourn, especially the Bennett family and the Ryle family in Melbourne. For peace of mind for Cecilia, Jim and Adore. For all victims of violence, assault and crime. For peace throughout the world, especially in Ukraine, Israel and Palestine. For our Edgewater neighborhood, and for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real and all whom they serve. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica Kay, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas and Emily, for all families and children in the city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. And from Elizabeth, we pray for Sister Mary, her sister Mary, who is hospitalized. And we pray for members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott, serving as security in Iraq. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry. We pray in thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays this week. Grant Luddington, Kathy Gunn, Tom Klein, Marcolina Viegas, and Julian Coe. We give thanks for the priesthood ordination anniversaries of Father Thomas Scott, Mother Barbara Henry, Father Ted Durst, Father Robert Cristobal, and Mother Laura Gotthardi Littell. And from Ron, we pray in thanksgiving for the diaconal ordination of Simon Dingleson. And now we pray for the repose of the souls of the departed. Barbara Bennett, Ryan O'Neill, Ken McClellan, Kirsty Ryle, my niece in Melbourne, Janet Panetta, and Ellen Holly. And at the anniversaries of their deaths, we remember and pray for David Wadreska, Joey Keezer, Paul Ryder, Margaret Evans, Shirley Liu, Paul Gustalese, Father Dean Paxton Rice, Harold Gray, Evelyn Flusky, Anthony Piggott, Sandra Clough Gorey, Benita Allen, Robert Anderson, N. Lee Newcomer, Paulina Maggio, 
and Dorothy Emma Hart Acker. And now we pray a prayer for peace. God of love, you created us and you called us to live as brothers and sisters. Give us the strength daily to be instruments of peace. Enable us to see everyone who crosses our path as our brother or sister. Make us sensitive to the plea of our citizens who entreat us to turn our weapons of war into implements of peace, our trepidation into confident trust, and our quarrelling into forgiveness. Keep alive within us the flame of hope so that with patience and perseverance we may opt for dialogue and reconciliation. Renew our hearts and minds so that our way of life will always be the way of peace. Amen. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And together the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives. By giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And this concludes morning prayer uh, for today, this, this second Wednesday in Advent. And I do apologize if you uh, heard my fur babies communicating how the doorbell went. I don't know whether you heard that, but uh, then that inspired my uh, fur babies to respond. Um, as I look out my window, as well as a garbage truck going into the alley, I can see blue skies and even sun. So wherever you are, whether it's Chicago on this beautiful day or elsewhere, may you have a wonderful day. And may you encounter God's great peace, God's great love, and God's great joy. Please stay well, stay safe. <laughs>